Finally, we have a free version of Emu Deck on Windows. This makes emulation on Windows super easy. If you are not familiar with Emu Deck, that's completely understandable since it was initially only available on Steam Deck. I have created a lot of video about Emu Deck on Steam Deck, but in this video, let's dive deep into using Emu Deck on Windows. Emu Deck is a one stop software for all your emulation games. The Windows version of Emu Deck is compatible with any Windows device, including all Windows based handheld PCs such as ROG Ally and Legion Go, as well as regular PCs. The Windows Emu Deck is still in beta, so there might be some bugs here and there. However, Emu Deck receives constant updates, so it's improving day by day. I have set up Emu Deck on three of my Windows handheld PCs. Everything works perfectly fine with all of them. Let's use PS3 emulator as an example here. Normally on Windows, if you want to emulator PS3 games, you have to visit the emulator website, download and install the emulator first. Then you need to configure the emulator setting and the controller. The same process applies to every single emulator you want to play. So setting up multiple emulators on Windows can be time consuming and it requires knowledge of each emulator. With Emuldeck, you can install most emulators from one place, and Emuldeck will automatically handle the configuration for each emulator. There is no need to understand how to set up the controller or achieve the best settings for each emulator. Emuldeck will take care of all those setup process. All you need to do is make sure you have the correct BIOS file and game ROMs. In this video, I will guide you how to set up the Emuldeck and how to use the emulation station the emulation station is so powerful, it allows you to access all your games from one place. If you have a lot of emulation games, the emulation station is a must. Without further delay, now let's set up Emuldeck on your Windows device. On your Windows, use Internet Browser search for Emuldeck on Google. Then click on the first search result. Here we are at Emuldeck official website. Then click download from top right. On this page, click Windows Beta to download the Emu Deck. This disclaimer informs you that your IT virus might treat Emu Deck as a virus. In such case, you will need to disable your IT virus while installing the Emu Deck. Additionally, it mentions that some drives may not be detected, but I didn't experience any of those issues on any of all my three devices. The last point, which doesn't make much sense, states that downloading Emuldeck with Microsoft Edge could lead to issues. However, I have downloaded Emuldeck multiple times with Microsoft Edge and encountered zero issues. You can simply ignore the last point and process to click download the beta. Once it's downloaded, it's a CMD extension file. Just double click and run the CMD file. A script window will pop up. After a few seconds, you will get this message. And this is normal, so don't worry. Just click yes. Click yes again. After about 10 seconds, you will get this message. Just click continue and update the app installer in the Microsoft Store. Just make sure the app installer is up to date. Then we can close this window. The script window will keep going once you close the Microsoft Store. Then click update on this window. Click close now. After 20 seconds, you will get this pop-up message. Just click yes. Emuldeck is just installing all the required data to run emulator on your device. So no worry about those installation. After this installation, it will see launching Emuldeck installer. About 15 seconds later, the Emuldeck installer will show up. Then just let Emuldeck do his job. It will take about 1 to 2 minutes to load into Emuldeck installation page. Okay, now we can start set up Emuldeck. On this page, we will select custom mode, which will give us more options to set up the device. Then click continue. Now Emuldeck is collecting all your drive's information. So both my internal SSD and SD card are detected here. I will pick the SD card as my game ROM storage, but you can use the internal SSD, it's all up to you. If your SD card cannot be detected here, try to format with Windows first. Then we can click next. On this page, you just select your device. 
if your Windows device is not listed here, you can select Windows PC or Windows handheld at the bottom of this page. The Emule Deck will configure the controller based on the device you selected here. Here I will pick ASUS ROG Ally, then click Next. On this page, you can just turn on any emulators you like to install into your system, but you can always come back to this page later on and install more emulators. After you turn on the emulators that you like to install on this page, then click Continue. This page I suggest you leave everything on, so Emuldeck will configure all emulators for you. Then click Continue. I usually have the auto save feature turned off, but if you want your game to be saved on exit, you can turn this on, but it only works with the system listed on this page. Then click Continue. If you have a Ritual Achievement account, you can log in here, but I don't have one, so I will just skip this page. The next couple pages were really based on your own preference. I will quickly skip those pages, and you can always change those settings later on inside the email deck. Once you get this page, we can select both Emulation Station and the Steam Library, then click Continue. For Emulation Station theme, you can pick any one you like from here. This can be changed later on. Then click Next. For this theme, you can pick any one you like, then click Next. On this page, you can set the resolution for each emulator. Here, I will change the VU to 1080p, since VU game can be played very well on Ally with 1080p resolution. You can also adjust everything on this page later on inside the email deck. You don't have to worry about if you set this correctly or not. You can adjust them based on how the games perform later on. Then click Next. This is the final page before the actual installation. It just tells you what will be installed onto your system. Then click Finish. The email deck will now start installing all the emulators you just selected and configure them for you. This will take about 4 to 5 minutes. Then you will get this pop up window. Just click Yes. The installation will keep going. About 1 minute later, you will get another window. Just click Yes again. The installation will continue for extra 3 to 4 minutes. Then you will get this page. This page tells you that Emule Deck is using Steam input, so you need to launch your game using Steam. Otherwise, the controller will not work. Also, with Ally, you need to make sure your controller are in gamepad mode. Then we can click Next. Click Skip for now here. Now we are at Emule Deck main interface. At this point, we have successfully installed Emule Deck. Then, if you go to your SD card or hard drive partition, depending on which one you selected at the beginning of Emule Deck installation. Here, I will click on the SD card since I picked the SD card when I installed Emule Deck. Then, you will see a folder named Emulation. This is where all your emulator and emulation games will be stored. If we go inside the Emulation folder, we will see some subfolders here. The first one is the BIOS folder. No doubt, this is where we store all the BIOS files. If there is a subfolder for the gaming console, you should drop the BIOS file inside that folder. Otherwise, just add the BIOS files inside the BIOS folder. For example, we have Yuzu folder here, so you should drop the Switch firmware and case inside this folder. Then let's go back to the emulation folder. The second folder is ROMs folder. So inside the ROMs folder, we have tons of subfolders. Each subfolder corresponds to one gaming console, and we need to make sure the game ROMs are added into the corresponding ROMs folder. For example, the Switch game ROMs should be copied into the Switch folder here. That's pretty much all for the Emule Deck installation. Now let's look at some main features and functions of Emule Deck. From left side menu, the first one is Quick Settings. Under this menu, we can change how retro game emulation looks. You can change them based on your old test. Then let's move to the second menu, Manage Emulators. Without doubt, this is the place we manage all our emulators. We can see all the available emulators from Emule Deck inside this window. If we click one emulator, it will tell us more information about this emulator. If this emulator requires BIOS files, it will show under this page. It also shows that if your BIOS files are good or not. This is quite useful. Then on the right side, we have Reset Configuration. 
reinstall, uninstall, and update this emulator. Also, we can click hotkeys. It will show all the hotkeys for this emulator. If somehow your controller is messed up or not working, you should come to this page of the emulator and click reset configuration. This will fix the controller most of the time. If you click on an emulator, it does not show any BIOS information on this page. That means there is no BIOS required for this emulator. So I recommend you come back here and check for updates every two weeks. The next one is Emuldeck Store. This is the place where you can download some homebrew apps and games. I found myself didn't use this feature at all. The next one is Steam Room Manager. This is very important menu of Emuldeck. We will load all our games into the Steam library from here. I will show how the Steam Room Manager works in the next section of this video. Then we have Quick Reset and Custom Reset two menus here. Most of the time we should use the Custom Reset. It has more options compared to the Quick Reset. If you click on the Custom Reset, it will bring us back to the Emuldeck installation page. From this menu, we can reset Emuldeck installation. The next menu is the screen resolution. On this window, we can change our emulator's resolution based on our old taste. The last menu I want to talk about here is the BIOS checker. This is very useful. It tells you if your BIOS file has been detected or not. So after you add the BIOS files, just come back to this page and do a BIOS check always. All the menus after BIOS checker are only available for paid version of Emuldeck and most time they are not quite useful, so I will not cover them here. That's pretty much all I want to cover for the email deck. It should already cover everything you need to play emulation games. Next, I will show you how to add games so you can play them from your Steam library. I will use PlayStation 2 as an example here. If you need more detailed information about BIOS and ROM, for other emulators, you can check out my Steam Deck emulation videos as reference. The BIOS and ROM files set up are exactly the same between Windows and Steam Deck. So first, let's go to the Manager Emulators and click on PS2 Emulator PC SX2. You will see the BIOS needed on this page. This means you need to have BIOS files in order to play these emulation games. If the emulator you click does not show BIOS needed, that means there is no BIOS file required for the emulator. I can't tell you where to find the BIOS files because they are copyrighted, but you should be able to get them pretty easily. Once you have the BIOS files, then just go to Emulation folder and BIOS, paste all your BIOS files here. Then if you go back to Emuldeck and refresh the emulator page, it should show BIOS files detected. Now you have the correct BIOS file. The next step you need to do is adding your PS2 game ROMs into the emulation folder. Then inside the ROMs folder, and look for PS2 folder. And then move all your PS2 game ROMs into this folder. Here I will only add one game ROM for demonstration purpose. Once your game ROMs are moved into this folder, then we need to go to Emuldeck and click Steam Room Manager. After you get into this page, the first thing is to click on Tangle Passers and turn off everything here. Here I suggest you to turn on the Emulation Station first. The Emulation Station will allow you to access all your emulation games from one place. Then look for the gaming console that you are going to play. Here I will click on the PS2 and turn it on. This means Emuldeck will only scan your PS2 ROM files. If you are adding multiple emulation systems at once, then you just turn on multiple gaming devices on this page. Once you have the system turned on, then click Add Games button at the bottom. Then click Puzzles. Your emulation games will pop up on this page. You can click on the left and the right arrow here to change the game artwork if you like. Then we just click on Save to Steam button. Now all your emulation games will be added into your Steam library. Then we can close Emule Deck and go back to desktop and open up Steam. If you go to your Steam library, the PS2 emulation game will show up here. You can now launch your PS2 games from your Steam library. If you need to add more emulation games into your Steam library in the future, just repeat the same process. 
If you have a lot of emulation games, then I prefer to use Emulation Station. It's just a better way to manage your emulation games, rather than dumping them into your Steam library. With Emulation Station, you don't need to add your emulation games into your Steam library. They will pop up inside Emulation Station after adding the game ROMs into the ROM folder. If you want to know more about Emulation Station, I have made a dedicated video on the Steam Deck, but it works exactly the same way as on the Windows. You can check out this video on my channel. Also, I suggest you to create a desktop shortcut for Emulation Station, so you can access all your emulation games from desktop. As I mentioned before, the Emulation Station is worth to use if you have lots of emulation games. It offers a unique look into your emulation interface, since Emulation Station has so many themes that you can use. I think that's all for this one. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. As always, thanks for being here.